I'm John Diarmo with the Kokio Valley Sword Group. And I'm Edward. And today we're going over the Aisen Uchidome Kata. Aisen Uchidome uh, means harmonious timing uh, strike and block. And it is uh, it's a very, very simple kata. Um, it's, it's got a lot of utility, so it's pretty cool. Um, when I was being taught the kata, this was taught as the last of the Tashi Seho, but I think that that is just one of those things that happens in study groups sometimes where things get a little out of order because every other place that I've seen the katas listed or seen the katas performed, uh, it is always second to last and uh, Amashi Uchi is the last one. So uh, that's why I've chosen this order. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and do the kata once to demonstrate. As always, I will be Uchidachi, Edward will be Shidachi, and then we'll break the kata down to its individual parts. Right. As you can see, it's a very direct, very simple kata. So let's go ahead and talk through the parts. Kata begins as normal. I'm in Tate Zen, he's in Gaidon. We both push to Chudan. As normal, I drive up into Hasso. Eddie follows doing the same. His uh, left foot is forward. And we step one, two, pausing on the third step. Good, so we're out of range. We're both going to step in and cut. Now, as we cut, we see that we're both cutting and we're going to bind. The way we are binding is with our shinogi Gs against each other. Our swords have a very slight angle to uh, help this bind go along, Up. right? And so to get this, you're pushing in, right? You're not trying to push against their sword, right? You push in, boop, and that little angle will will protect you. It's uh, Science. it's a it's a little harrowing at first, but once you get used to it, it's pretty simple. Now, uh, Eddie's going to play a dirty trick on me. He's going to relax his elbows a bit, and I'm going to think I can escape. I step back, and he takes my forearm. From here, he's going to press, 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 till he's at my throat. I drop, right. Now, he's going to push the attack. Front foot does a little slide. He thrusts into Chudon all the way. I come back and recover my position. Then we go into Kamayo Toku. I roll back. He rolls down. We chicken step. And we walk out of it. So, super, super easy kata. Incredibly easy, right? Um, the only tricky part for beginners typically is the bind. So that's what we're gonna talk about a bit. Um, and like most things in sword work, it's kind of easier to talk about what it's not than what it is. So when Eddie swings at me, I am not binding in this fashion uh, where my edge is against his edge. Um, this is, <laughs> your, your sword will not appreciate this. Um, it is not my edge pressing against the side of his edge, right? It is not his edge and my edge pressing towards each other in an X this way as opposed to that way, right? It is very much the flat of my sword, the shinogiji. Having fun times with the flat of mine. Exactly, touching the flat of his. My body drives squarely in. You want to resist the urge to do that and to try and push against his sword. You've got to trust in the geometry of your position and you develop that trust by doing drills where you just come in, right? And you guys slowly push towards each other's face. 
Right? Hit the other guy in the face. Right? And then you step. And then you step. And then you go the other direction. Oh. Step. Oh, step. Step. Now you see where I'm controlling the sword position. Right? I don't want to let the sword drift uh, really far down towards my hand. Right? Because if I'm using a uh, katana that doesn't have a guard, like those of the Tensho mounting, uh, or if I'm using this work with a Wakazashi or Tonto that uh, is Aikuchi, doesn't have a guard, right? he's going to take my hand. I have to be able to bind and hold that bind here. Um, now, you might be thinking, well, that works all nice and good if he obliges you. If he also gets this... Uh, sort of binding position, but what if he doesn't? What if he's trying to do something different? That's where this work really comes in, because the assumption of this kata is that he is not obliging you, right? We meet this in this bind both to teach this kind of pressure bind, um, which we, we actually do a lot more work with this kind of bind in the bow katas, um, which I'm not going to be showing. <laughs> Right? <laughs> um, but this type of, uh, let's say your sword's forward. Good. Press against mine. And we're going to roll. We're going to roll. We're going to roll. Ha ha. He's put that. The synthetics suck for this. Right? Push. Right? This kind of driving push. He pushes back. Right? To where we're controlling the opponent through this sideways pressure. Jimmy Christmas. Right. Is, uh, it's a very useful ornament. It, it, is a, it is a powerful way of studying how to control and manipulate their sword. And I think even more importantly, it educates uh, your body as to how to form support. Because if you try and do this just with your arms, you're gonna find that you can't because you're competing against force put through a two and a half to three foot lever. I mean, it's, that's a, that's a <laughs> it's, it's a lot of leverage to try and like, like he-man arm this, right? You study your form, you study the support that you're driving through the tool, right? To be able to understand it. And this, uh, this bind in Aisid of Shinome, right? is just the first uh, kind of inkling taste example of that, right? Um, so again, you're here, you're making that cut, 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 cut. You see that your cuts are going to come, that neither of you are gonna move. Instead of playing chicken, you take a little turn, bump, and you bind. Uh, this is, the bind is, kind of between that Kiryotoshi and Kesegiri angle, right? So it's, it's very slight, very, very slight. Uh, try not to over-exaggerate it, right? You don't want to give away your work. After that comes the relax, right? He relaxes elbows without moving his sword at all, right? So he's in, he's in, I feel his pressure, and I feel that pressure drop, and I think, Phew! I can get away, right? But, and he cuts. Right, ah, the cut here, uh, just like in any of the cuts that Uchidachi receives, uh, offer the broad, flat part. Uh, don't offer your bone, right? Because people get excited, they take strong wax at you, you'll break your arm, right? Soft and high to protect your head. They'll hit and then they'll push down, right? You'll relax and they'll lead the way. They push with a tip one, two, three to your distance, right? Uh, we've covered all this in the previous videos, so if you're a little lost, go back, watch them from the beginning. Um, is there anything you can think of for this? It's very simple, very, very simple kata. The only thing is synthetics suck for the binding work. Yeah, yeah, synthetics are a little extra slick. It's a slick plus. Right, uh, they're, they're even more slick than steel. Um, so if he can bind on synthetic, he can bind on everything. Yeah, and, and the synthetics have a lot more flex, too. Like, even the, this is the extra beefy, this is, this is the big old cold steel. macho cold steel version. Right, right. Um, 
and it's still, it has a lot of, uh, it's got a lot of flex to it um, for our kind of work. Not too much. You can, you can make do, especially if you're on a budget, but. Uh, yeah, this was under $40. Right? Under $40, under $40 is hard to beat for a Boken that you basically can't break, especially if you're in the habit of breaking Boken. Um, anyway, off of that digression. Uh, as always, if you want to understand this work, you have to pick up a sword and go train.